friends, welcome to my channel. So today I have a very, very large, well for me, large book haul for you today. I was recently up in Seattle, Washington for uh, almost a couple weeks, like a little over a week and a half, um, unfortunately due to a surgery in the family. Um, so we wanted to all be there to support. Uh, luckily it went very well, recovery is going great. Um, but during some of the downtime, I had the opportunity to go to several different used bookstores in the area. Um, the I have like no good used book stores where I live now that my favorite bookstore shut down because of COVID. Um, so anyway, uh, I have a whole bunch of used books here. Um, and I tend to only buy my books used. I rarely buy books new, um, only if it's maybe in a series that I'm really into and I, and I really wanna read the next book, but otherwise um, I justify getting a bunch of books because I almost never pay full price for them. Um, so anyway, I stopped at several different used bookstores and I'm just gonna go ahead and show you guys what I got and give kind of like, I guess a brief synopsis of what it's about, um, if I can remember. Um, so let's get started. <laughs> I will also go ahead and just put the name of the used bookstore that I got each of these from somewhere on the screen. Um, I yeah, I like to support used bookstores, so if you're ever in the area of Seattle, most of these were in located within Pike Place Market, which is a very fun place to shop. Um, there, are, I think I found three bookstores within Pike Place, and then I got I did a big shopping spree at a Half Price Books in Redmond, which is, it was about like 20 minutes from our hotel, so not very far outside of Seattle. So the first one that I got is Heartstopper Volume 1 by Alice Oseman. So this has been going around, has been getting just rave reviews. This is a comic about two boys. Basically, it's about uh, what well, one of them's kind of you know a shy shy quiet kid and the other is like a sporty a rugby player so i've just heard really good things about heartstopper and i couldn't believe that i found it uh, i can't the things you find in the big city right uh couldn't believe that i found this uh, used um, in great condition so uh that's book number one and then i got a very nice like perfect condition copy of dune by frank herbert so i have watched the movie um i don't really know any Thing about the world. Um, I've yet yeah, never read the book before. You're following a boy named Paul Atreides who is part of this very wealthy family. It's a sci-fi, uh, very famous sci-fi if you don't already know what Dune is about. Um, and basically his family runs this, pl uh, runs this spice trade harvesting this this drug called spice which like heightens people's senses and i know that it's really important and crucial basically for space travel in the future um the planet is called arrakis and it's that's kind of all i can describe about it the movie was a little confusing f for me just because yeah i didn't know the backstory of what's going on um but yeah i've heard that this is really good so uh, i've also heard that it could just kind of stand alone on its own it's part of a series but I don't know, I've heard that the other books weren't as great as the first one, but anyway, yeah, this will be cool to finally uh, read the book now that I've already watched the movie. Then I got The Postmortal by Drew McGarry, and this is about, um, you're following one guy in particular, but it takes place in basically a future where the cure for um, aging, I think, Yes, the cu a cure for aging has been found, and one guy I think is trying to get the cure or something, and he gets involved in, yeah, immortality comes with its own unique problems, including evil green people, government euthanasia programs, a disturbing new religious cult, and other horrors. So this is it's supposed to be it's supposed to be kind of funny and witty, um, but also you know a bit a bit creepy, you know, kind of dystopian sort of thing. Um, so yeah. And then I have The Blade Itself by Joe Abercrombie. This is the first book in the First Law trilogy, and I have heard very good things about this. It's kind of, I think, well known in uh, the circles of people who enjoy grimdark fantasy. Um, it kind of follows a cast of, uh, there's a handful of characters that you're following. I honestly don't really know too much about the plot. It's maybe it's kind of like, you know, a misfit gang of people um, in this fantasy world. I don't really know 
anything else about the plot. I just know that there's a handful of characters that you're following. Each of them kind of has their own agenda, own backstory, and own thing that's going on. And as I said, it's it's grim, dark fantasy, so it's supposed to be a little more gritty, um, maybe a little more, I don't know if pessimistic is the right word, uh, but it's, you know, it's, it's darker, a darker fantasy. So uh, I've heard really good things. And then I found Trail of Lightning by Rebecca Roanhorse. This is the first book in the Sixth World series. And this is a sort of post-apocalyptic story that is based off of Native American legends. And I think it takes place on what was formerly a uh, Navajo reservation. You're following a girl named uh, Maggie. And there are monsters, there are, uh, was it like medicine men they talk about? Yeah, medicine men, um, tricksters, dark witchcraft, uh, and deteriorating technology. And that just sounds super cool. So, yep, yeah, Trail of Lightning. So those books were all from the same bookstore, and I will go ahead and go through the ones I got from the next bookstore. I have Edge Dancer by Brandon Sanderson. This is a short story that takes place in the Stormlight Archive universe, um, and I have read this already. Um, I can't remember if it was on ebook or, or how I read it, but um, this is just a physical hardbound edition of that. Uh, it's very good. I've read. I've read all, there's one other short story as well um, that hopefully we can find sometime. Uh, but yeah, this is just a hardcover, small version of that story. And you're following a character named Lift. Uh, if you probably won't, you won't know who that is unless you've read the series, but yeah, this is a short story focused on the character Lift. I found another Brandon Sanderson, which is Star Sight, which is the second book in the Skyward series. I think it's just called the Skyward series. I have not read the first book. I have it. Um, but yeah, I just found the sequel hardcover and decided to pick it up. And the series is about you're following a girl who it's a sci-fi and you're following a girl who wants to be like a pilot, I think, but due to the actions of her father who like he defected or he, he died or something happened where it kind of put disgrace on her family name. So she's kind of, I think, scorned a little bit, but she wants to become a pilot. Um, so yeah, that's all I know about the series. So yep, this is book two. Then I found The Ocean at the End of the Lane by Neil Gaiman. Um, I love most of Neil Gaiman's work, and this is about a man who returns, like, maybe to his old family home due to, like, a funeral or something, and there's something weird about the place. He has, like, maybe, there, I don't know if there's, like, ghosts involved. I'm sure there, there's some kind of supernatural thing going on. Um, that when he was young, he maybe he saw something or something weird happened when he was young. So he returns um, back to his old house and you're kind of following what happens to him as he uncovers, you know, what really was happening, what was really going on when he was young, the things that he saw. Um, there's like, an, there's another mysterious girl, kind of magical girl involved. Um, but yeah, I've, I've heard good things about it. It's a nice short story. So maybe I can save it for a time when I need to, you know, cram something in that's short. And then I found a copy of Lolita by Vladimir Nabokov. And this is a very controversial um, novel, uh, but it's it's a classic. Um, and basically you're following this, this guy, this older guy, who basically falls in love with a minor, basically an underage girl. Um, and it's apparently, I mean, obviously that premise sounds really, really gross, um, but I've been told that, you know, the main character, he's presented in a way that, like, you don't hate him. He's he's a relatable character, um, and obviously an old man, an, o an older person with a minor is definitely not okay, but this is a classic novel. I'm very curious to see what the writing style is like, what it's about, um, you know, just so that I can understand, you know, the cultural impact of, of Lolita. Then I found the first three volumes of Saga by Brian K. Vaughn and Fiona Staples. Uh, the store had like uh, maybe all of them up till like volume eight or nine. I don't know what they're up to now, um, but I've never read them before. So I just decided to go with the first three in case I didn't like them. Um, I honestly don't know much about the series. The only thing I know is the, these two people, like I think they're both on opposite sides of a war and they fall in love and they have a child. And I think it's them just trying to 
you know, protect their child, trying to escape. Um, I don't know anything else other than that. Um, the artwork looks really cool, and I think it's been rated pretty highly, so I am excited to check these out. Then from a different bookstore, I found just one book, and it is actually book eight of the Pendragon series, The Pilgrims of Rain. I love the Pendragon series. It, it was one of my favorites growing up, and I do need to and want to do a reread of it, but I'm trying to collect the hardback editions of all the books, and this is just one of them that I didn't have in hardback, so this is replacing it. And Pendragon, the series, is basically you're following a boy named Bobby Pendragon, who learns that he is a traveler, who, so it's, it's a portal fantasy series and travelers are able to travel to all of these different I can't even remember if they're called planes or what the worlds are called but he's able to travel to a bunch of different places and only travelers can do that and he is trying to stop uh, a an evil traveler named Saint Dane from I don't know if he's trying to destroy all of the the planes or what it is um, it's been a long time since I read the series but I, I loved it growing up and I just wanted to collect hardback editions of them so this is for book eight. And then for the biggest part of this haul, I got a whole bunch of books from Half Price Books, which you guys might have heard of. Um, and let's just dive into all the books I got from there. I got The Space Between Worlds by Micaiah Johnson. This is actually a book of the month edition, and this is a, a sci-fi where you're following this girl who, so in the future, travel to parallel worlds has been discovered, but you can only travel to a world where uh, the version of you that lives there is dead. And you're following a girl who like a bunch of her um, other selves have died. For some reason, she's very, very good at dying, very good at getting into trouble. And um, you're following her and like her mentor or something. And I think they, it's a sapphic romance between the two of them, I think. Um, that's really all I know about it. There's there's some trouble going on and she's yeah traveling between all these parallel universes where her uh, the other versions of herself have died. And then I got All the Stars and Teeth by Adeline Grace. You're following a main character who is like the princess of this realm who can do like soul magic, I think, and she has to prove that she's worthy of the throne and she partners with this man who is trying to retrieve his stolen magic and they, they team up and I think it's kind of a, a nautical um, story. There's, I think there's like mermaids, yeah, vengeful mermaids, legendary monsters, stowaways, um, and yeah, that sounds, it sounds great. It sounds like a lot of fun. Then I got Crown of Feathers by Nikki Palpretto, and this is, I think, a kind of a sister story, a story about relationship between sisters, and it takes place in this world where I think there was a queen that ruled, um, something is going on with the queen, and there are um, warriors called Phoenix Riders, and I think one of the main characters is a girl, and the Phoenix Riders, I think, are only male, so she disguises herself as a boy to um, become a Phoenix Rider, and they're kind of maybe like a, an underground sort of group, or a group that's like been prosecuted, or something like they're not supposed to be around anymore, and um, their rise back into significance poses like a threat to to the current queen something like that i don't know it sounds really cool and then i got all these bodies by kendare blake i'm not sure if that's how you pronounce her name but your it takes place in the 1950s late 1950s and you're following this this boy who is like he wants to be a reporter when he grows up and he winds up um working, well not working with, but talking with this girl who refuses to talk to anyone else and she's found like covered in the blood of these murdered people um, and none of it, yeah, none of it's her own and she's like the only survivor just in this area of a bunch of dead bodies and there have been like a string of killings going on apparently and the girl will only confide in this young boy who wants to be a reporter so he kind of has to figure out you know, what was this girl doing there? Was she the killer? Was she a victim? What exactly is going on? And what was this girl, you know, doing among all these bodies? 
Then I found a House of Salt and Sorrows by Erin A. Craig, and this is a 12 Dancing Princesses retelling. I actually know nothing about the original 12 Dancing Princesses story, but there are obviously there were 12 girls and some of them have have died in mysterious circumstances and one of the girls doesn't believe that it was just an accident and it's it's kind of nautical if it's kind of um, it has a really cool cover. I think that this cover is like super gorgeous. Um, but they live in this house and um, they're just, people say that the place is cursed and she is, Annalie is the main character and she's trying to figure out like what, you know, what happened to her sisters or the other people and where is her other where are her other sisters going kind of off mysteriously doing things that she doesn't know what they're what they're doing again i don't have any context for the retelling i've never heard the original story so i don't actually know what this story is about but it sounds very cool sounds kind of gothic and creepy so um yeah and then I found Truth Witch by Susan Dennard, which is the first in the Witchland series. And the main character, there's like two main characters, I think. One of them is the aforementioned Truth Witch, who can tell the difference between truth and lies, which comes in very handy, you know, with political stuff. And there's another witch who is a thread witch, who can see the connections that, you know, the threads of fate that bind people together. And I don't really know much more else about it. I'm assuming they have to work together to to escape and figure out some plots um, but yeah there's you know witchiness and magic and it sounds right up my alley and then I found Slay by Brittany Morris. I am really excited about this. Um, you're following a young girl, a young black girl who has secretly created this big um, online multiplayer uh, trading card game called Slay and it's it's a black community, a safe space for black gamers online but when um, I think someone is murdered, someone is killed due to um, uh, like a dispute about something uh, in the game and someone is murdered because of it. The game gets a bunch of negative press about being, you know, like a, a, a racist, you know, place, a place where criminals and killers go. And it's, I think, just all about her kind of, you know, defending this world that she created. And there's obviously a bunch of racism and stuff involved. Um, all about you know safe places safe spaces for black people and minorities and about you know this one teenage girl's um you know experience with this um and you know creating and fostering this community that is you know being under attack by something that happened out of her control so i am really excited to read this ever since i heard about it i think i even mentioned it in a video way you know way early on um and i think this is going to be great i can't wait and then I found Gallant by V.E. Schwab. I think that's how you pronounce it. I don't know if it's Gallant. Um, and this is pretty new. And I'm really excited. V.E. Schwab is one of my favorite authors. Um, all I know about it is you're following this girl who gets like this letter from her mother saying, and it's, it's fantasy. I think it's all in a fantasy world. Uh, this letter telling this, uh, this girl to go to her home, which is in Gallant. And she goes there and everything's like not quite what it seems people people are trying to dissuade her from like going into this certain part of of the house or the town um i think there might be you know monsters um evil stuff like that um i don't really know much else about it and this book is also so cute it's like square <laughs> um but yeah so that's all i really know about it but i love v.e schwab so hopefully i will also love this too oh gallant is a manor Actually, so it's I don't know if it's in an, in a, if it's in our world or if it's in a fantasy world, but Gallant is the name of of a manor. Um, yeah. Then there is Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor. I recently read her um, Strange the Dreamer series, the first and second book, and I was surprised how much I really enjoyed it. I actually, you know, I enjoyed the writing. The story is very beautiful. Um, and this is, I think, one of her, yeah, her earlier works. I don't, I know like very little about this. Basically, I know it takes place in uh, Prague and you're following a girl who maybe has some special powers or people don't know who she is and that's the whole point i i really i don't i don't know much about this and i even this book doesn't even like have a blurb on it so i really don't know much about it but i really enjoyed um strange the dreamer so i wanted to give this series a try and this is the first book uh there are three books 
Yeah, the back says, a sweeping and gorgeously written modern fantasy about a forbidden love, an ancient and epic battle, and hope for a world remade. And then I found Girls with Rebel Souls by Suzanne Young. This is actually the third book in the Girls with Sharp Sticks series. I read the first one very recently and loved it. I was totally surprised. I had never heard of the first book before. I'd picked it up on a whim several years ago and finally got around to reading it, and it was so, so good. So I ordered the second one online and haven't read it, but I happened to see literally just this book. They didn't have the first or the second book, just the third book. I took it to a sign that it was meant for me and I picked it up so eventually I'll get to this third one. The first book was amazing. Um, it's about these girls who, well the first book is about this, the, these girls at this special academy where they teach them to be you know you know perfect, prim, beautiful, polite, uh, upstanding you know members of society. Um, they don't teach them like math and like history and the stuff you normally learn in school. It's this kind of creepy like grooming school basically for these girls and um, the main character is trying to figure out, you know, what's really going on here um, and it's, it's just really good. So yeah, this is the third book in that series. And finally, my last book is Call Down the Hawk by Maggie Stiefvater. This is the first book in the Dreamer trilogy, which is sort of a separate series from The Raven Cycle, which I just recently finished the last book in The Raven Cycle, and the series is so good. Um, I'm really interested to read more by Maggie Stiefvater, and this just is a continuation kind of of that series focused on one of the main characters in that series named Ronan Lynch. And I... I guess, I, I mean, it says it right on the cover what it is, but maybe I just won't spoil exactly what's going on because I'm not sure if they recommend that you read this without having read The Raven Cycle. You probably want to read The Raven Cycle first. It's really good and I don't want to spoil anything. So um, it's just, yeah, it follows Ronan Lynch from The Raven Cycle, which is super amazing. So go read that series if you haven't. Holy crap, that was so many books. If you're still with me, I hope you've just had a nice chill time listening to me try and explain these books that I've never read. This was, it was probably gonna be super long. Um, I actually had to change my battery out because um, I was recording for so long, um, but anyway, yeah, that was all the books that I got. I got so many, um, probably more than I should have, but I just, uh, I'm so starved for used bookstores in my area. So I just had a lot of fun going to all these places uh, and getting new books, new books to me, but they, they were all, all of these books were used. So all of them were about half off. Um, so yeah, anyway, those are all the books that I got. I hope that you enjoyed. Maybe you found a couple. Let me know if there are any in particular that are super good or maybe some that weren't so great. Feel free to comment below about any of the books that you've read um, that I showed or that you want to read. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.